G'day everyone, Andrew here from Hutchinson Pierce. I'm here with Ben from Lawn Tips and we're here in Orange at his beautiful property uh, that I'm sure everyone's aware that we've been uh, sponsoring Ben and providing some green machinery for him to use on the place. And I uh, thought it'd be a great opportunity now, some of the restrictions have lifted it around COVID to uh, spend some time going over the machines, give you guys a bit of a walk around of the features and talk a bit about Ben's experience and also, you know, why you might purchase uh, one machine over the other and, and some of the best uh, situations to um, step up a model or down a model and um, covering it off that way. Uh, we're gonna start here with the, with the ride on mowers. Uh, we've got a brand new present here for Ben today, taking delivery of uh, his next zero turn. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, Z530M that he's had for a few months now is off to its forever home. <laughs> <laughs> One of our big customers, so um, looking forward to getting that delivered and, and the new uh, semi-commercial model uh, here on, on the place. So, Cool. Um, ben, thanks for joining us. All right, mate. Thanks for having me and thanks for all the gear. Seriously. Oh, super handy on the property. Like, happy to help. Happy to help. Um, cool. We'll kick off with uh, more of the residential style. Uh, unit. So we've got the Lawn Tractor model X380 and the Zero Turn Z530M. And I suppose obviously the main main differences there are the uh, the form factor, with the Lawn Tractor being a bit a little bit more traditional, with the seat at the back, engine at the front, ability to uh, tow a little bit more with these as well. So that tow bar versus the, the zero turns typically can handle a little bit more stress and pressure uh, for bigger trailers and bigger sprayers and stuff like that. So a little bit more versatile, but you do sacrifice a little bit there with um, mowing speed yeah. and and I suppose uh, versatility and, and ability to turn around in pretty tight spaces. Um, how have you found the, the differences between the two so far, Ben? Yeah, I've found quite a few differences. Like with the zero turn, obviously I love whipping around, getting under trees. That's the main reason I use this. Probably to get out of stuff quicker. But if you want a more, I find that actually things a little bit more comfortable. You sit back, one hand on the wheel, cruising yeah. around on it. And I use it for spraying, as you were saying, and towing stuff around, which is a big thing. Um, you couldn't, I couldn't pick between the two. It would have been my favourite, but because they both got their own like pros and cons, you know what I mean? As you said, like with this thing getting quick and under things, because you can obviously go into one spot and do the zero turn. As yep. you say, whereas this, you've got a, it's almost like a three point turn when you get stuck in a tight area, but yep. yeah, they've both been great. And that's a good point. You've got the cruise control yep. on this feature that's as well, right. which is handy, which you can't have on a zero turn. Um, but uh, also I suppose the turning radius on these not being as good as a zero turn where it's you know, on a spot. You can lock these, um, around pretty tightly yep. you end up with a an uncut circle of around 400 mil so a bit over a foot so it's still pretty tight yeah considering but um, depending on trees and stuff like that yeah exactly um so i have a similar engine We've got the kawasaki v twin uh this is in 23 horsepower in the ride on 24 horsepower on that one um just with slightly different cylinder liners and and, and things like that and that steps up again uh, into the, the semi-commercial or, or more of that heavy-duty uh, Kawasaki engine in the, in the other one we'll, we'll look at it in a minute. In a minute. And um, if you want to have a look up here at the controls, probably the main one, like Ben said, is, is in that three-point turn with a ride-on, you end up um, needing to, to push that uh, button in so that you can actually yeah. engage it in reverse and, and so the mower doesn't cut out. Um, once you've pressed it and you start in that reverse direction, it um, you don't you can let it go. Yeah, I figured that after a while. <laughs> <laughs> For a while, though, I was holding it and then <laughs> yeah, you just press it once, which is awesome. Heaps better than holding it. <laughs> That's it. Um, one other point to note with the ride-ons is your forward reverse uh, twin touch pedals on the right hand side and the brake on top. Uh, even though when you do let go of those pedals, you end up um, It'll slow itself down so you can right. But the brakes there is more of that emergency stop. Yeah. Um, park brake, um, cruise control, just locks that forward pedal in the right speed. Cruise control is great. Especially yeah. when you're spraying or doing something along those lines, just having a one set speed is awesome. awesome. And um, yeah, little uh, hidey hole there, 48 inch deck, 
uh, the same deck on both both models. Uh, main differences there being um, the caster wheels. So the anti scout wheels on this one are a bit easier to adjust and um, spin those around and be able to get that deck in and out. Whereas on the zero turn, they are fixed in that four position and it's a couple of spanners to move those any scout wheels up and down. Um, Morrow deck adjust, you've got a foot pedal and then a dial in the center of the um, operator station here with the, with the ride on. And the 38 centimeter high back seat. And if we move over to the zero turn, sort of that, that, it's a reverse setup. So the engine at the back, you're seated more into the middle of the machine. You can get closer and, and in around obstacles a lot easier um, by having that deck sort of more protruded forward, which is quite handy. Um, your foot operated assist, lift assist for the deck uh, on the right hand side there. And then your, your choice of mower deck height um, through that pin system. How have you found the seat? Comfort wise? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Very comfortable. A little bit of suspension on it too. Yep. Which is great. But no, it's been great. A bit, a bit more comfortable than your standard homeowner would have well, You know what I mean? Where it's just solid and you hit a rock or something or something you go, hey! <laughs> you jump off the top of it, so it's good. It's been great. I was found a good couple, couple of hours in this one. How many hours have you got now? Yeah. 18, so. Yep. 18 hours. It's it's good to have a good idea then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's very comfortable. Um, one thing you do find with these, because they are very manoeuvrable, you can get yourself into some tight situations, um, whether it's up next to a fence or... <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. done that twice. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, yeah, when you slip and you lose a bit of traction, because they are so light on the front, I guess. But it's not hard to get out. And at least you can flick it in tow. Yes. And you can push it out. And they're that light, you can actually do it by yourself. Yeah, which is, which is but awesome. no, that's exactly right. Because and it, there you're steering. It's not if you do lose traction left or right. That is one difference between these two. Is yeah. if you do lose steering, um, and it's a little bit different in mindset. If you're going on the side of a hill and you start to lose traction, you've got to compensate. Exactly. That's, it doesn't feel like natural. Like, you slide you go the wrong way, then that's the thing. But yeah, and they take a little bit because I'm not having used very much. Not in the last course where like miles like this, big miles of wheels on them. So it took me, oh, to be honest, probably 20, 30 minutes to get used to yep. you know, muscle memory of how it works. And once you get it pretty straightforward, but it's just the first couple of minutes where you're like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're jumping around. And <laughs> but no, they're very, very intuitive. Yeah, yep. they're very intuitive. Yeah. Ah, awesome. awesome. Um, another couple of points to note here with the rocks. So the rollover protective uh, structure here. You can use them with and without that. So you may notice in Ben's videos, he's had that folded down to get in easy access around trees. Um, when you're operating it with it down, it just means that you don't need to put the seatbelt on. So there's a safety thing there is if it does end up rolling over, you can um, sort of jump clear. Whereas if you've got the rocks up, it's best to have the, the, the seatbelt on to hold you in that protected zone. Um, around the front, we've got, um, our park brake lever there. There's a lot of safety built into John Deere mowers. So, you know, you might be able to start it if you haven't got the park brake engaged and those um, four propel levers out in the locked position. It's actually um, good because my kids try to get on them sometimes and start them and there's no way they can <laughs> get them going because they don't know what to do. Exactly. <laughs> Too many things for safety, but it takes a little bit for adults to get used to it. It took me a couple of guys. <laughs> Which is fine. Exactly. Um, Good, easy view to the fuel tank level too, which is handy. Um, you don't get that on some of the smaller models, but the Z5s you do, and, uh, and I think the aspect of the Z3s, which is handy. It does give you a warning on the actual on the screens up there as well, which is very handy. Yeah. Many times I've been nearly finished mowing and it starts flashing at you. That's right. If you like me, I'll push the limits a lot on fuel. Yeah. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> which you probably shouldn't, but... That's right. Uh, that's it. Um, and other than that, yeah, the, the deck has that wash port there. Um, Ben's got the hose link adapter. Still a bit there. We've got to make sure we take that lift off before we go. Um, an easy clean out, so that you can lift those deck covers, uh, spindle covers, and uh, and hose in there, um, which is really handy. You got a front reinforced uh, edge, and also that 16 mil 
rod welded on the outside there to you know, stop any because that that does contact things all, yeah, all the time and it's just that little bit wider yeah. it's good to have that as a bit of a bump stop because exactly. um, like anything like there's a lot of argument between what's better a welded deck a pressed deck um, deer sticks with the with the pressed deck but they do spend a lot of time around that reinforcement and it um, you know that's that's where the guys that'll have the welded deck will say oh the welded decks are stronger um, which I think it's much of a muchness it, it all comes back to longevity and, and you know resistance to rust rust is the killer of decks so if you've got a bit of reinforcement around where you know that that 16 mil rods more of that sacrificial lamb mm -hmm. so you don't impact the deck itself uh, and that's and keeping those smooth lines from the pressed deck you know stops any grass sticking in those corners and you know potential for rust spots yep. okay. sure well uh we'll move over now to um the big boy, the big boy. <laughs> so i suppose the main reasons why you'd, you'd switch over between a, a smaller zero turn like the z5 or a z3 into a z7 is a couple of reasons one is is deck strength and design uh, because not necessarily width because you can get the 60 inch deck across each one 48 54 and 60 inch options um, but this will give you a, a stronger deck so it uh, increases the the thickness there to a, a nine gauge deck versus the, the 10 gauge in the in the residential models you also get um, some extra reinforcements there on that any scout wheels uh, across the front extra big rollers um, and you get a, a, a faster mowing speed so you get across more acres when you've got 12 to worry about yeah, <laughs> And uh, if you can see there in the shot, look at the difference in the size of the chassis rail. So that that size yeah. there, yeah. the thickness of that caster hanger, yeah. you know, those um, pneumatic casters there with the smooth turf saver um, tyres yeah. or casters are a lot different to the residential style where you've got that smaller um, size there and the smaller front casters. So yeah, a lot more of a, a commercial size. Um, you can notice the difference here with that um, with that green deck. It's actually designed to be stepped on, whereas these ones aren't. The yellow ones aren't. Yep. Similar design around the easy to clean spindle covers, foot operated lift assist, yep. and your uh, height control moves from down the front up there to uh, a dial gauge system similar to the right on. Um, yep. the top. You also jump into a um, electronic PDO engage to engage your mower deck whereas the others are a, um, a pull pull switch these are a, a flick rocker switch a slightly larger seat um, still with similar comfort and armrests and uh, the comfort glide seat adjusts so that slides forward and back all the way forward for Ben Big fuel fill here, and that's a good one about all John Deere mowers. It's got a big three inch um, fuel fill cap, uh, which is really handy. Um, you can get bigger jerry cans up near it. You don't need a huge, big, long funnel. And I still seem to spill it though. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, haven't got the skills. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's cool. They are good. <laughs> cool. Um, and then, yeah, ergonomic design on your, um, on your levers. One difference here on this Z7 too is the park brake is actually built into the levers. So whilst you've got a separate orange park brake on the Z5, this is actually built in and engages and disengages by pulling those levers in and out. Just a bit of a time saver. Uh, one other thing with the deer uh, controls is you'll notice a similar look and feel of color across all three. So that anything orange is, is either throttle or park. Um, anything yellow, so the PDO engage, that's danger. Something's going to be spinning. Um, and then, you know, when we get into the tractors, you'll see you know, there's a lot of color coding between the um, the hydraulic valves from the front of the cab, so you know which one you're turning on for the rear and things like that. There you go. Foldable rocks again on the Z7, and then um, similar height though. So even though it looks like a lot much larger mower. It's, um, it's still a similar height and, and John D designs that to be under a 1.8 meter height. 
So if you're going in and out of a garage and roller door, it's designed to fit under that six foot uh, roller door. Uh, the Z7 gets the similar Kawasaki V-Twin, but in the uh, commercial grade, uh, I think it's an FR series engine. So heavier duty cylinder block, it's got a different fan drive. It's actually got a metal fan in there that act actively cleans the, uh, the air intake and, and the cooling system around the engine. But with similar look and feel for the service points. So, you know, single point drain, easy access to fill, that hose can drop down into a bucket so you don't have to worry about oil spillage. Yeah, pretty handy. Easy clean up. Um, and like Ben said, that tow mode access down there, they'll be able to uh, disengage it when they be. That's right. <laughs> it's deceptive at, at Ben's house because uh, on camera there's not a lot of... It doesn't look like the slopes, it, does it? Slopes, no, but it's it looks flat. Steep, but it's very, there's quite a few steep areas, especially in paddocks and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cool. And all of these models available at your local Hutchinson Pierce dealer.